everybody, welcome to episode 7 of Me Time Gamer Podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Fornier, creator and editor-in-chief of MeTimeGamer.com. I hope everybody is doing well. Thank you for listening to the podcast. If it's if you're new, welcome. Sorry there wasn't any podcast last week. I just ran out of time to do so. So hopefully uh, this week we have a big, big, big podcast. So hopefully you guys will enjoy. we got a lot of new releases. we got a lot of news to talk about. And uh, yeah. So let's get started with the new releases for the week of March 3rd. The first game on the list is White Knight coming to PS4 and PC. Uh, if you a couple weeks ago, I think two weeks ago, I, I uh, there was an article I released with the trailer on this game. I really enjoyed the the visual. It's um it's a horror survivor kind of uh, game. So uh, if you go uh, go to uh, metimegamer.com and uh, on the search bar on the left, uh, just uh, tap uh, White Knight on the search, and uh, you'll find it. Watch the trailer, and uh, uh, yeah, it's coming out next next week on Tuesday. So uh, for next, and also for uh, March third, we have uh, Resident Evil Revelations Two, Episode Two, uh, for PS4, PS3, Xbox One, Xbox 360, and PC. Uh, we have Hell Divers coming to PS4, PS3, PS Vita. We got Scream Ride coming for Xbox One, Xbox 360. We have Shiflings coming to PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Last but not least, we have Mario vs. Donkey Kong tipping stars for Wii U and 3DS. So uh, that's the game so far. Uh, if you're looking for a full list, because uh, in the middle of the week usually I don't, I don't, I can't find all the new releases, digital and uh, physical. So um, usually, usually between Sunday and Tuesday, between Sunday and Tuesday of of the week that's coming up, I usually have the what what game, all the games that are coming out. I'll usually try to get all of them. So uh, that's it for the new releases. So let's 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 start the long list of uh, this week in news. All right. So the first big news this week is uh, uh, GTA Five actually gets uh, the PC version uh, get a new gets a new release date. So so it gets delayed a bit. And uh, the heists finally have a final r- uh, release date announced. So um, Rockstar Games announced uh, earlier this week that uh, the heists were coming on March 10th. So that's c- in a couple weeks. And um, also they announced that the PC version uh, was going to be delayed till April 14th. So I guess it's only a week or two more. So that's it for that piece of news. There's not much, but it's it's an important piece of news because the heists, we've been waiting for them for a while now. So... Uh, Hopefully you guys are still hyped to try to heist out. They're very cool uh, multi-tiered missions. With uh, uh, if I remember correctly, they, they take a, I think to complete them from point A to point B, it takes a, almost an hour and and stuff like that. So uh, hopefully you, you guys on the PC held held on from for the ride and are ready for April 14th. At least you guys are lucky. You're gonna get uh, 4K resolution or up to 4K resolution in the game. And if you go to um, of course, once again, I forget every time. Uh, for the first four uh, news that I'll talk about, I do have articles on the website at metimegamer.com. You can go check out uh, for the for the uh, for this for this news for the Grand Theft Auto Online heist news. Uh, they they did release some screenshots which lo- look pretty nice about the heist. There's no PC version uh, screenshot, so. Uh so yeah, that's um, that's it for the GTA news. Next piece of news we have is the, actually the uh, free games for Xbox Live Gold membership for the much um, uh, for the March 2015. So um, so this list uh, do keep in mind it's, it's it hasn't been officially uh, called yet. It's actually uh, a user uh, on NeoGaf. His name is MatrixMan92. Uh, he was able to find on uh, Microsoft's uh, Expert Zone site. That uh, they they announced what the um, uh, what the games were for March, and uh, so for Xbox 360, we're getting uh, Tomb Raider uh, for that's from the first of March till the fifteenth of March, uh, and you also get Bioshock Infinite from the sixteenth of March till the thirty-first of March. 
for Xbox One, well, f you get Rayman Legends. You get uh, from for the March 1st to the uh, March 31st. And the iDarb is actually still available all this month. It was free game for Xbox One last month, and it's still actually for this month too. And also, good little news for April. There's it's going to be double game with gold. So uh, there, there's no game announced yet for for April, but they're saying well you'll get double the game. So you'll get two Xbox game and four Xbox 360 games. So that's that's their little that's their little thing that they released. It's not official yet. They haven't said anything yet. But uh, yeah, so. That's it for the. That's it for the games with gold. Hopefully, probably next week we'll get the PS Plus and news about the free games. The next news is uh, Twitch announced that they're going to their own con. So basically, TwitchCon. For a little under four years now, Twitch has been synonymous with gaming and streaming. Many people like like us, like me, Time Gamer, stream games for people to watch, either for enjoyment or to give people a better understanding of, a better understanding of certain game. On February twentieth, Twitch announced the launch of TwitchCon, a community driven event to feature all things Twitch, top broadcasters and the like. Emma Cheer, Twitch CEO, stated Twitch broadcasters have the most passionate fans, so we want to create an amazing experience where they can come together in person. TwitchCon will be an opportunity for the entire community, broadcaster, game developers, viewers, and and us to play and learn together. Uh, the event will take place in Moscone West, San Francisco, California on September 25th to September 26th, 2015. Uh, this is a great time to, to meet big names in your, in your everyday uh, you see every day on Twitch and mingle with fellow community members. Uh, personally, I think this is always a good idea to bring people together and promote games and gaming in general because if there's one group that always gets the short and is gamers. So that's it for the TwitchCon news. So that that's that's really interesting. Uh, there's a lot of cons and all those kind of stuff, but hey, why not? Why not have another big event where people can gather around and uh, talk about their favorite passion, right? So a little news that actually I'm recording this um, on Thursday morning. Um, one little news that was released yesterday is um, uh, uh, Turn 10 Studios and Universal Pictures announced that a new standalone Forza game was coming featuring the cars of the Furious move, Fast and Furious movies. Uh, Forza Horizon 2 present Fast and Furious will be hitting Xbox One and Xbox 360 60 on March 27th for free. Uh, being developed by Playground Games, this new racing game will take place in France and will be feature will feature Tej Parker played by Chris Ludacris Bridges, which plays a mechanic. The game will promote Furious 7 coming on out April 3rd and feature many cars from the, the movies, including the 1970 Dodge Charger RT driven by Vin Diesel. So please do keep in mind this is a standalone release and will be only free till until April 10th and will be $10 onward. $10 onward. So that's a great little thing. Uh, I've never tried the Forza game because I'm only recent, recently an uh, Xbox user. So... Uh, I'll definitely give it a try, and hopefully I'll be able to give <coughs> you guys my opinion on this game. Um, and that's it for right now. We don't we don't have any more information on th that subject. Um, the other little news. Uh, this one's a bit older, but uh, so the it's for concerning Drive Club. And l earlier this week, um, a representative Sony actually talked about um, the state of uh, the PS Plus edition of Drive Club. So, Drive Club was released in North America on October 7th last year. A uh, free limited version of the game for PS Plus subscribers was initially supported, supposed to be available when the game launched, but was delayed due to major server problem, problems for the online-centered game. Uh, weeks later, the free version was postponed until further notice. Uh, confusingly, this latest statement comes just one day after Sony Computer Entertainment Europe President Jim Ryan reportedly said... I can't say anything at this stage in response to a question about whatever Drive Club PlayStation Plus edition is still happening. So bas basically that statement is what he said the day before. is uh, We are continu continuously working on improving the server capacity to enable us to launch the PS Plus edition of as quick as possible. So that that's the news on, uh, I guess I wanted to mention to you guys that uh, they're still working on it. Uh, the, so you guys can't don't have to worry about it. They did, yeah, so... 
so yeah, they're still they're still they're still working on it. So uh, you guys don't have to worry. I know you some of you guys thought a lot of the news headers were saying that uh, that the the headlines of the news saying oh they might probably will be canceled blah blah blah. But no, it's they're, it's still they're still working on it. So we'll we'll get it eventually. Um, I heard some guys around the net saying that they might. One logical would be that once all the all the DLCs and stuff would be released. That they they might actually release uh, Drive Club free for all PS Plus member like a free PS Plus game, which uh, to to it, I would see happening. It, it could be logical. Only future will tell. I I, I certainly would want to try it because I, I'm like I said for fours. I'm not a big driving game guy, but I don't I don't mind trying them when they come out and they're available to everybody. So. On to our little, our other piece of news. Um, so it's about Street Fighter V getting an online beta. Um, so on the PlayStation blog, um, they were, uh, who was it? It was Peter Rosa from Capcom. He's a community manager there. Uh, he announced that the, the game was actually getting um, the first ever op- uh, online beta program in the uh, uh, Street Fighter franchise history for PS4 and PC. Uh, these tests will be essential to collect feedback and to ensure that Street Fighter V is the best iteration yet. Uh, in North America, players who pre-order the game will automatically be enrolled into the beta program. So um, that's about it. Uh, th- that article comes with a. They announced uh, uh, Nash. I'm, I'm, I'm not a. I don't know the. <clears throat> I don't know the. Um, all the players that well, but. Nash is returning into the in Street Fighter V, so if you pre-order a game, you you're gonna get a chance to online beta. Hopefully, they do have somewhat of a like what uh, Evolve and and uh, Heart, uh, uh, Battlefield Hardline did. They have open beta. Hopefully, we'll get to uh, try that out. Uh, I haven't played Street Fighter in so long that uh, I think it's Street Fighter 2 that I played last, and it was pretty fun back then. And looking at a lot of trailers for the most recent recent ones, they they look pretty fun. So uh, hopefully we'll be available to we'll be able to play that. So next little piece of news that we have is um, Project Cars. Uh, a lot of racing news this week. Uh, Project Cars has been delayed. F- uh, is now set to be released on April 2nd. Uh, from its previous announced uh, release date on March 17th. Uh, this is not the first time that the, the game w- is delayed. It's been delayed from November 2014, before that. Uh, Project Cars is a game that will be coming to PS4, PC, and Xbox One. Uh, a slightly Mad Studio actually released a, pr- uh, released a statement on the reason for the delay, and uh, they were saying that Moving a release date was not re- moving a release date was not an easy decision to make. As we know, our fans are eager to get their hands on Project Cars. We know that these extra days will allow us to provide the best game experience that our fans deserve. We ensure you to the wait will be worth it. Sorry, I'm just reading here. Uh, we ensure you that the wait will be worth it when the game does arrive in early April. So. Um, if you guys are waiting for Project Cars, uh, it is coming a little bit later. So it's, it's always I don't I don't mind delays that much anymore. Like when I was younger, I did mind it a bit more, but uh, nowadays it it's, doesn't doesn't really matter that much. At least if it gives the game a chance to be a little bit more polished and uh, looks nicer and works better, because God, if we know last year we had so many broken games that uh, nothing was working properly. That uh, so. So yeah, at least uh, yeah. So you guys get a, we'll just wait a bit longer and we'll get the game coming out soon. So the last little piece of news we got this week is uh, the division. If you guys knew that uh, Ubisoft is Ubisoft is working on a game called uh, Tom Clancy's The Division, and uh, some user on Reddit actually found some details that there might be there there might be getting in a public alpha for it. Uh, there's no date for it yet. But uh, the division. If you're not sure, the division is an online shooter featuring heavy RPG elements. So basically, the user on Reddit he went he went digging to the HTML files, uh, and they found that there's an alpha section to the website, which is it's not active yet, but it, it is there. So, um, so and it, it, when when they, they did they were able to find a uh, be able to create a screenshot. 
uh, yeah, so that would be nice. There's the, if there's one game I would like to try this year is the division. It does seem very interesting. Uh, playing with a, a lot of friends would be pretty cool on this. So uh, you guys keep your eye out. If uh, there might be an alpha coming uh, coming out for for the division later this year. And that's it for the, the for all the news this week. So let's move on to uh, what I'm playing. So basically, I played a little bit more Dying Light. Um, which I won't talk too much about because uh, it isn't uh, that is uh, the my ping of the week subject. But the other game I played was actually The Order 1886, which I will try to do a review some for either by the end of this weekend or the the weekend after that. I'll keep you guys updated, or you can just check on the website for more details. Uh, if you haven't played, the, if there's one game that got a lot of uh, got a lot of heat last week is probably the order uh, a lot of people were complaining about the length of a game i was actually getting tired of hearing people complain about that um so far what i'll say is the, the game is very interesting uh if it's worth 60 dollars I, I i would say it is i i enjoy i am not totally done yet so i won't go into full detail my opinion might change on it but uh i'm really enjoying the mechanics that one of the like there's if if you guys seen a bit of the previews you saw that one of the weapons was was a termite pistol uh, rifle, which is pretty sweet to use. Uh, the only thing I, I will hate on a bit is that the fact that the guns you there you uh, you can't switch back and forth between. Well, you can switch back and forth between the guns, but some of the, gun, some, some of the gun guns are uh, level or chapter specific, so you won't be able to find it on every chapter. Which is kind of sucks, but uh, the, besides that, the game is really fun to, uh, very interesting to play, and I can't wait to finish it and see uh, how it pans out and uh, get a final assessment of it all, so you guys can can um, see my uh, uh, my uh, my review coming in the next couple of weeks, and hopefully uh, I'll have good news for you guys. So uh, all right, so that's all that's all I played for this week. So, so let's move on to the ping of the week. Every week when I do a podcast, I uh, bring a subject to uh, to the podcast. Uh, it could be anything from a review to just an opinion piece or anything I want to talk about with you guys and give my thoughts on. So this week I decided to just talk about my uh, review of Dying Light just because I enjoyed this game so much that, uh, yeah, I want to talk to you guys about it. So basically... Uh, I so basically for uh, Dying Light um, for the just the general uh, detail of it, uh, it's available on PS4, Xbox One, and Xbox One and PC. They actually were making it for PS3 and Xbox 360, but they actually canceled a lot of it, which I think actually did help the game somewhat. Uh, this game was released on January 27th. Uh, it's developed by Techland and it's published by Warner Bros. Interactive Entertainment. Uh, basically, it's an action role-playing survival horror game. It's rated M. Uh, it has a single-player and co-op, and you can download it, or it is available in this format. So for this version, I played on the PS4, which I bought myself. So uh, if there's one game that I totally left out of, left off my list this year, it's Dying Light. I knew I knew that it was a zombie game, but didn't quite read more on the subject, except that they were ca- they canceled the older generation version, which in my opinion didn't create that much of a fuss when it happened. After it was released at the end of January, I started hearing a lot of, about the game, and reviews were good, which really surprised me. I decided to look at some streams and immediately piqued my interest in trying the game. So let let's start reviewing the game. So basically, if we look at the story. Uh, the, basically, the story is a major outbreak of an unknown virus has plagued the city of Haran. Having been walled in from the rest of the world, the citizens of this Middle Eastern city must fe- fend for themselves with little to no supply, especially in the slums, which was hit even worse. Uh, Kyle Crane, the player, is dropped in the, the thick of it and is immediately faced with an awkward predicament, which led to him getting bit. Crane is faced with the situation and must help a group of a group stationed at the tower, which are the ones that helped him when he got bit. Also working, also, also working for the GRE, the player must find a man that has files on the virus and get them back to save the entire world from getting infected. Although the story might seem diluted because of the open world aspect of the game, Dying Light 
offers an intriguing storyline with twists and turns that doesn't appear to be too long for its own good. I enjoyed the subtle touches the game offers by giving the player somewhat of a range when it comes to approaching a certain situation. The story, in my opinion, was a nice escal escalation when it comes to the progression of things and doesn't feel disjointed in any regards. Um, when looking at the visual part of the game, oddly enough, Dying Light is the first game in recent memory that had that had that I had to get accustomed to to the graphical design of the game. I don't know if it was the movement of the free running side of thing that was a bit disorienting, but I got the hang of it after about a good 30 minutes of gameplay. One thing that did bother me a bit in some of the anime is some of the animations while performing performing parkour. Some of the building grabs when climbing don't line up properly, and it's usually predominant because you're pretty much face deep in the animation. It's not all bad though. In most cases, it turns out it turns out as planned and really seamless for 95% of the time. Beside the slight hiccup, the game looks stunning and features a nice draw, a nice draw distance with extreme, extremely minimal popping. Uh, looking at the free running side of the gameplay. Uh, the parkour aspect of Dying Light is what the game is about. You traverse the city of Haran with this method, preferably across the rooftop as much as possible. Like I mentioned in the visual section, some of the animation look a bit, a bit off, but beside that, this point, free running is well executed compared to other games that attempt to do the same. Characters' movement feel fluent but are not exaggerated, meaning when you fall from a high location, you will hurt, hurt or kill yourself. The game has landing zone that nulls the damage but does create a couple of seconds where you're defenseless. You do get the occasional time where the character doesn't grab an edge and that inevitably kills you. I had a couple times where I had to retry a certain, a, a certain section because I kept falling and meaning my inev inevitable death. One of the things I found a bit frustrating when controlling Parker is the button mapping. Jumping with R1 felt a bit unnatural because I'm accustomed to X being jumped. I wish that I could uh, at least be able to swap these two uh, once in a while. Um, one thing, uh, of course, looking at the game, it's it's about zombies. So, what really impressed me uh, is how many types of zombie that the game presents to the player. You get the usually slow walking zombie called the biters in this situation, but you could get attacked by virals, bombers, bombers, and many different kind of zombies that will make your life a living hell. Then there's the Volatiles. These are night zombies that can, at the beginning, kill you in one shot. Their main selling point is that they're brutal adversaries. When one of them spots you, a group of them converges on your location. Right from the beginning, the game is challenging because of the zombies, and they're great because I, I, was, really, I, was, I was ready for an open-world zombie-oriented game that blend, blend, blends a real challenge. Uh, Dying Light has a compelling night and day cycle, which is quite unique compared to its counterparts. At the beginning, the first couple of missions force you to do this, to do both, so you can get accustomed to them. But after the tutorial mission, it has a better balance. Although the night cycle can be almost entirely skipped by sleeping in a safe house, you can gain way more experience at night because of the difficulty it presents. I enjoyed how natural the transitions feel between day and night. I also like the fact that you do get the warning that the night is coming and you should be going inside somewhere. Um, looking more at the world aspect of the game, uh, the city of Haran is a vibrant, well-designed de well, well map that gives the player the opportunity to explore its complex terrain, find hidden loot, and collect easily, collectibles easily, and doesn't have dead areas on the map. One thing you'll notice in, is that there isn't any fast travel in the game. You would think that this would hinder the game, but it doesn't. Personally, I felt like it added to the feel of the game and doesn't discourage the player to explore. The map isn't huge, but it has a great layout to help you traverse it with ease. Uh, side missions. Uh, if you enjoy a ton of side missions, you won't feel left out of Dying Light, and a majority of them feel unique in their approach. Of course, you get the standard fetch mission, but a lot of the other ones are ones are multi-tiered and they really don't feel like you're doing the same mission over and over. You have the missions like helping help survivors that are either being attacked by zombies or army men, collect drops, uh, defend travelers and much uh, many more other types of mission. In my opinion, I found it quite refreshing that the way that it's done in Dying Light. It felt unique compared to many open world games. Dying Light 
uh, is mostly a, a for look, if we look at it uh, if we look at the weapon and crafting system. Uh, Dying Light is uh, mostly a melee game. Of course, you have your standard nine mm pistol and police rifle, but these are not really recommended in a zombie apocalypse uh, and are only available later in the game. Your main defense are knives, ice, ice spikes, table legs, and anything you'll be literally have an impact on the situation at hand. The game also f has grenades, molotovs, and your standard projectile projectiles, which do come in handy when faced with a crowd. Damage point from weapons increase while you progress in the game. Well, while you progress in the game, so to not give you almighty power right from the get go, but eventually you do, do become almost unstoppable. The weapons and supply can be crafted by the players when presented with the skills or blueprints. You can add damage types to weapon, create medkits, lockpicks, and you can also create specialized zombie-appropriate weapons like firecrackers to lure their attention, or exploding sh shuriken throwing stars to keep a crowd from gathering at many more items, and to keep a crowd from gathering and many more items to help you survive. The weapon and crafting aspects are a nice mechanic that are well implemented in the world of Dying Light. Could be a tad more difficult to obtain supplies, but they did they did talk about it, a hard mode coming in at a later time. Cra crafting feels right at home because of how the game is. The weapons are cr you craft look crude in a good way. So Dying Light also have co-op. Co-op uh, co is where the game can get really interesting. Of course, you have the obvious fact that the game becomes a bit less of a challenge, but also creates a great competition opportunities. When, when performing a task and or getting to a location, you can have challenges that appear, and when both party, in my case it was me and another person, agree to the challenge, you get a timer and what needs to be completed. Challenges vary from picking up the most loot to get the to getting to get to the location first. Co-op allows up to four players in one team, which I was a, not able to try out, but I can imagine that it would it could probably get crazy with that many people. Dying Light also has a, camp a companion app I tried I tried out. Um, if you don't have time to pick up a controller or play Dying Light, there is an alternative. Techla Techland offers the Dying Light companion app that will help you in the main game by ga gaining supplies when completing missions in the app. The app is free and has no microtransaction in the process, which is, which is nice because I played a couple of games that had companion apps but was behind a small fee. Uh, when you try the app, you basically get a detailed map, concept art, and a couple of other things that don't really help you in the game that much. What's nice about the Dying Light app is it's pretty straightforward when, when you use it. You recruit scouts, send them on missions, level them up, and get supplies. That's it. Uh, you, can, you can then select some of your, the supplies and send them to your game. You can yeah, send them to your game, uh, which will give you a bit of help. Pretty much any supplies that, that is available in the game you can get from the app. I don't usually recommend companion apps, but in this case I will I will because it helps you progress in Dying Light at no extra cost to you. Uh, I played a lot of Dying Light while wearing... Uh, so yeah, the audio uh, of Dying Light. I uh, I played a lot of Dying Light with a, while wearing a, my gaming headset to capture all the little sounds and environment, uh, environmental noises. I, fi I, I found that the audio... I I find the audio I found that the audio was crisp crisp and pleasing especially when the cracking a hammer in a zombie's head. The voice acting is fine but nothing out of the ordinary in my opinion. Uh I think that the part I enjoyed the most was the background music which the only way I can really describe it is by referring uh by referring to 20 days later uh, which is a zombie movie from 2002. The the game the game has that same eerie music as the movie and it re I really enjoyed it. So, for my final thoughts on the game, uh, for a game that I didn't even have on my list, I had a blast playing Dying Light and I see myself playing it for a while. All the features I mentioned work well together and make it one of the my contenders for the game of the year. If you had doubts about Dying Light, for sh uh, if you have doubt, if you had doubts about Dying Lights, drop in and try the game out. You won't be disappointed. And for my final score, I gave it a nine out of ten. So I really enjoyed that game a lot. Um, there is a lot of the couple of DLCs uh, coming out later, so hopefully you'll you'll you guys will be able to try that out. 
Um, so yeah, that's it for uh, that's it for the ping of the week. All right, on to the next feature, which I call kickstarting it. So basically, kickstarting it is a is a segment that I started a couple weeks ago, and basically it's uh, I I it's a game that I choose from Kickstarter or any sites that look the same, and uh, I, t- I I promote it a game that I find interesting or might be interesting to other people. Uh, so yeah, for this week I decided to ch- the game is uh, Edge of Eternity. It's uh, developed by Midgar Studios. As of today, uh, February 26, there is 2,211 backers. Uh, so the amount that they needed was $40,000. And as av- as of today, 20, the 26, they have 97,623. So they are well funded, but I I, I I I'm still promoted because uh, a lot of people the people should get their hand on this game, their hands on this game. Um, funding ends on Sunday, March 20. March 22nd at 6 a.m. Uh, platforms, it will be available on PC, Mac, Linux, PS4, and Xbox One. So PS4 and Xbox One were actually a $60,000 $60, stretch goal, which they obviously met. So basically, Edge of Eternity is a JRPG game with a classic turn-based combat with wep- weapon manage- management and allows up the player up to four person in, in your team, including you. Uh, Edge of Eternity takes place in the world of Hyrian, where invaders try to take the world and make it their own. After being able to push them back, they are plagued with the metal sickness that transforms people into disease-infected vi- vi- villagers to cr- crawling monsters. As Darian, you travel the world recruiting allies, building your, up your magic, evade or fight monsters, and the consortium and much more from your classic JRPG. The game features a non-linear story driven by the choice you make and affect your path in certain areas. Visually, the game looks awesome for an indie developer, which is only a four-person team. I'm usually not a big fan of turn-based games, but Edge of Attorney does seem very interesting, interesting and the characters, character descriptions make the world appealing. The game would would appeal any Final Fantasy players for sure. There's still a couple more tiers that you can that it can't reach, so uh, go check out their Kickstarter page uh, and help them out. Uh, so I usually I always release a, a Kickstarting an article at the same time, so go check out the trailer on the page. Uh, if you would like to get your game to be featured on Kickstarting it, please send us an email at contact at metimegamer.com with the sub- subject title kickstarting it request so that will do it for this week's podcast uh, thanks thanks to techno acts royalty free music for the intro outro uh, uh, also for uh, mansardian and umfa for this week in news intro and the ping of the week intro which you can find them at freesound.org uh, I'd like to point out the affiliates we have for you guys because uh, I enjoy doing this pod, uh, the the website and the podcast, but I, uh, sometimes you, you guys do understand it costs money to run a website. So if, if you guys feel like helping out, uh, I do have Amazon affiliate links, which you can go uh, check out at uh, you can uh, yeah affiliate links for uh, uh, for Canada and the United States. Uh, all these affiliates can go. Of course, I'm saying this in a bit of a, a no order particularly particularly. Uh, you can go check out the affiliates at metimegamer.com forward slash affiliates. Our next affiliate is uh, g2a.com, where you can find awesome uh, Steam, PS4, PS3, Xbox One games. All They're all digital. And they, you get the code, basically. I'm pretty sure you, it might be physical. I'm not sure. You guys should go check that out. Uh, check out our link. Got playasia.com, play-asia.com. These guys have, you can import awesome Japanese game that never came out here, or even the hardware or stuff like that. You can even buy uh, uh, PS Plus cards and stuff like that. Uh, you can also uh, check out our ThingGeek affiliate link, where you can all buy all your geeky equipment needs, like t-shirt, uh, Doctor Who screwdrivers, cups, uh, f- whatever you're looking for. And um, right, right now, until um, March 1st, 
uh, fill, uh, for, uh, for my podcast listeners, or if you go on the website, you can use a special code to get 25% off a $50 plus order on selected items if you just use the code stuff for stuff for sale. So basically, S T U F F F O R S A L E. So when you go out to the checkout, just enter that special promotion code stuff for sale and you'll get 25% off your order, your $50 plus order before taxes, I assume. And uh, yeah, so you guys can go check that out. You can also go check out tfury.com, always using our affiliate link. These guys, if you don't know what tfury is, tfury is as a, uh, they have a new t-shirt every day for 24 hours. It's a com- community design t-shirts, which usually make reference to TV shows, movies, video games, and uh, they have nice little references or jokes and Stuff you'll like, so I have ordered a lot of t-shirts from them, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy too. Go check them out. If uh, if there's a shirt designs that you saw in the past that you would like to check out, they do have a gallery section where you can uh, pay a little bit more. Usually their their t-shirts or their daily t-shirts are eleven dollars. In the gallery, they're actually I think they're twenty dollars now. So go check that out. They're really I really enjoy their t-shirts. Next affiliate is UPlay Store, where you can buy you um, you can buy Ubisoft games. You can go. We also have an iTunes affiliate. You know, you guys know what uh, iTunes does. We also have a PlayStation Store affiliate now, where you can uh, basically go to the PlayStation Store and you can buy. Uh, I think my uh, I only get credit on movies and TV shows. Uh, you can probably try uh, video games. I'm not. I don't know if it's going to work, but uh, go try that out and tell me if it works or not. Uh, well, I'll know. <laughs> you don't have to tell me. Sorry, I'm getting confused here, but. Um, if you're looking, if you're if you're looking for the podcast, of course you're already listening to it. But if you don't feel like listening it to, uh, if you don't feel like listening to it on the website, you can also find it on Stitcher. That's the, that's the the app I use all the time. You can also find it on TuneIn, iTunes, and Audio Mac. Uh, if you want to download the the podcast, you can actually download it from Audio Mac. That's why I put it on that website. Uh, if you have any comments, suggestions, critiques, questions, to- topics for the ping of the week, or any- anything else you can think of, send, do send um, uh, your question. Do send those to podcast at metimegear.com. If you'd like to place an ad on the podcast, you can you can do so by sending an email to contact at metimegamer.com. Uh, if you'd like to follow Me Time Gamer, you can follow us at Facebook on facebook.com forward slash Me Time Gamer. Uh, you can also check us out on Twitter at uh, at me time gamer you can also uh, check us out on on uh, YouTube youtube.com forward slash user forward slash me time gamer where you can go check out I actually did a unboxing video for the the order 1886 which I will also post a video on the review when I get it done um, and you can see the stream I actually streamed uh, the order for two hours uh, so you can go enjoy that for uh, it's on YouTube now for your viewing pleasure. Talking about streaming, you can also check us out at um, twi- twitch.tv forward slash me time gamer. Uh, uh, I usually I try to put it on Facebook or uh, Twitter when I'm streaming and what I'm streaming for you guys. Uh, you, know, you can also check out my articles at gambitcon.com. And that's for this week, guys. Hopefully you, uh, you've enjoyed the podcast once again. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the... Uh, the coming the week coming up keep your eyes on the news there's a lot of news coming up and uh, G- I think it's uh, GDC next week so you guys can check that out uh, and yeah go get a controller play some games and hopefully you enjoy what you play have a good week guys yeah.